Hey guys, welcome back to another Learn and Try. Today we're going to talk about beer. Everybody's favorite alcoholic drink where you can share with your buds and talk about a cool story. Learn and Try with Matt. Speaking of cool stories, we got Scott Murdy here and he's going to tell you all about beer today. I will. I will do my best. So, if I don't, I will drink it. Yeah, hey, hey, you know. Haven't you heard that Merle Haggard song, All I Do Is Drink? That's right. <laughs> so, uh, can you tell me about a little bit about yourself and what brought you to Nashville? Sure, yeah. Uh, I grew up outside of Cleveland, Ohio, originally. Um, went to college at Ohio State and then migrated down to Nashville after that. I've been here about 30 years, but major in accounting and then also involved in the brewery. So I joke that one job pays the bills, the other one is the tax write-off. So. Okay. Sounds good. So what sparked your interest in the history of William Gerst Brewing Company? Okay, well, it actually started back when I was a kid in Ohio. I was about six years old and I started collecting beer cans. I was uh, on a hike and just started picking up cans off the side of the road and just thought they were kind of cool, shiny. I liked the different graphics and came home. I had about a dozen cans and my parents uh, started to support that as they would get me cans and I would get them from neighbors and my dad was doing a lot of international travel at the time and so he was bringing me back cans from Africa and Europe. Wow, and, wow. And then uh, the people he was working with would ship me cans. So it'd be like Christmas all the time. I'd get a big box of cans from South Africa or Kenya or Amsterdam. And so by the time I was in high school, I had about 3,000 different beer cans. So that's really what started sparking my interest in beer in general, just long before I was ever drinking it was just from a collecting standpoint. But moving to Nashville, I learned that there was a historical brewery called the William Gerst Brewing Company, and the predecessor of that is the Nashville Brewing Company. And they were in the same spot, and I started learning about the history and um, ultimately decided to write a book about it. Um, so where was the original brewery located in the Gulch. Where was it located? Yeah, so it was on in, back in the day it was called High Street, but now we know it as Sixth Avenue. And it was Sixth Avenue South, kind of in the back side of the Gulch, almost where the interstate is. And the, this is a photograph that we have on our bottles and our coasters and everything of the actual brewery. Um, that photo is from about 1885, very early photo, but the original Nashville Brewing Company was built in 1859. And then in 1890, William Gerst bought it, and they rebuilt it into a much bigger brewery at that time. Quite the endeavor. Um, this is an off-the-cuff question, but sure. have you done like some research on like um, why? Or what happened to the? Did, did they? When did it go down? Why did they destroy it, or why did they get rid of it? Yeah, yeah. So the brewery closed in 1954 due to national competition. Really, that's. The brewing industry really changed at that time because of television. Um, the bigger breweries were able to advertise on a national basis once TV came into play. And the smaller regional breweries couldn't afford to do that. And then everyone was seeing these brands on national TV. So that's the beer they wanted. And Budweiser is a perfect example. If you were in Los Angeles or Arizona or New York or here in Tennessee, you saw those commercials for Budweiser and everyone wanted it. And so Anheuser-Busch, could afford to do those national commercials and could afford to ship the beer in refrigerated rail cars. So that was wow. why the Gerst Brewing Company closed in 1954. And then unfortunately, just due to urban development in Nashville, it, the building got torn down in the 1960s. Huh, okay. But I do have a historical marker there. I've had that put in about 10 years ago where the original Nashville Brewing and Gerst Brewery was. Okay, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so what is, uh, I noticed, what is pre-prohibition beer? What, what, I mean, I know what the prohibition is, yeah. but what, what is... So you're probably referring to our national amber, which we market as a pre-prohibition style beer. Technically, it's a Vienna lager. It's made with Vienna malt. But we call it pre-prohibition because that was the style of beer that German Americans were brewing in the late 1800s, early 1900s, prior to prohibition that happened in uh, 1919. And it's a, it's just a ambered color, full malt beer, and after Prohibition, beer started to get more watered down, and I hate to use the term watered down, but um, they used a lot more corn as an adjunct, and it just took away the body and the flavor, and that really 
kind of became what beer as we know it until yeah. the craft beer industry took off. Okay. Um, what made you just decide to start, or I would say revive, the Nashville Brewing brand? Yeah, that was just um, more of a passion. Uh, I, I wrote that book, as I mentioned, as I was finding more and more history about it. And um, really, I had a lot of facts about William Gerst and his brewery from 1890 to 1954. I knew there was a brewery before that called the Nashville Brewing Company, but didn't know that much about it. And so the book came out about 15 years ago. And then since then, I just really, really started digging in more and more and had a relationship with the folks here that started uh, Blackstone Brewery, which is the production brewery we're in today. And uh, we thought what a good idea would be to brew some of these traditional German lagers that the immigrants were brewing in the late 1800s, in particular the Nashville Brewing Company, and had a lot of um, detail on the, the beers, the ingredients that they were using, um, of course the styles and advertisements in the late 1800s. So we kind of developed these, these beers that we do now under that brand according to them. So, like, I guess, do, recreating a flavor or a recipe from the 1800s, was there any difficulty in doing that, or was it straightforward? It takes a lot of trial and error and a lot of drinking. No, I'm, I'm joking. Um, it definitely takes some bad beer, which we end up flushing, but, but really it's, it's, it's more research. It's a lot more research than you would think. But the brewing process, as we know it today, really has not changed for the past couple hundred years. So okay. how, how they were brewing in the, in the mid 19th century is pretty much how we're brewing today as well. Okay, okay. Um, so what types of beer does Nashville Brewing Company make? Sure, so Nashville Brewing Company focuses purely on lagers, whereas Blackstone focuses on ales. And those are really the two styles or two types of beer. And uh, just like with wine, you think of red wine and white wine. With beer, you have lagers and ales. And ales are really what we refer to as the old style of brewing. Um, ales go back about 13,000 years, and that's what beer originally was, and it was natural airborne yeast. And that's really the only difference between an ale and a lager is the yeast. You can have the, the same malt, the same hops, same waters, but the yeast will make a difference on how it ferments and the temperature it ferments. And so really, lagers came, started coming about about a thousand years ago, and it's really by accident. And wow, I, how was it by accident? Yeah, so in, in Germany, particularly in Bavaria, they had some laws, more quality laws that they put in place. And these were monasteries brewing yeah. for the most part in the Middle Ages. And they were controlling, um, just from a, a quality control standpoint, they knew that beer would start to spoil faster in summer months because heat is bad for beer. You ever leave a six pack of beer in your car and the sun shining in on it, it goes bad pretty fast. So the Germans took the brewing seriously and they came up with a law to outlaw brewing in the summer months. And for, the reason for that was to keep it from contaminating. Also fire hazards where it happened in the summer because these were all open flame brew kettles back in the day. So the Germans still wanted their beer. They wanted to be able to drink throughout the summer months and into the fall, because the brewing season ultimately would end in March, and they weren't allowed to brew after that. So they would brew a ton of beer, and that beer is what we refer to as Marzen beer. Marzen is German for March. And so they would brew this beer, make it a little bit stronger, use up all the extra grains that they had. Yeah, okay. And then they would store that beer in caves, and they would ice the caves down to keep the beer cool throughout the summer. Interesting. And, and what happened was that... Were these built naturally built caves? Originally, they were just natural caves, and they started, once this process started getting perfected, they started digging out beer cellars. And, okay. And, yeah, but um, the, the natural airborne yeast, you know, back then they didn't have a microscope, so we really didn't know what yeast was. We didn't know what caused fermentation. We knew it was something, um, you know, back in the Egyptian times, they thought it was the gods. You know, they would pray to the gods for fermentation oh. to happen. In the Middle Ages, yeah. they, they, they knew it got it down to more of a science, but they really didn't know exactly how it worked. But they did what you think of friendship bread. We're taking a little bit of bread from an old batch into the new batch, and that's taking the old yeast and, or the yeast from the old batch and bringing it into the new batch. And that's what beer was doing. They were taking that from the old to the, to the new to transfer that yeast, and that's how yeast cells started getting isolated over centuries. But the ale yeast was dying off in these caves. 
but there was another yeast that started acting in its place. And what it did was it would ferment at cooler temperatures. Ideally, ale yeast is around 65 degrees is ideally for fermenting ales. But lagers, these were about 45 degrees and it was fermenting. It was taking a lot longer, but it was a different type of fermentation process and ultimately developed as a different style of beer. That is really interesting. So, so that's, that's what we focused. The Germans kind of stuck to that method. Yeah. And so that's what Nashville Brewing Company is because it was created by German immigrants. And so that's what we stick to, whereas Blackstone does more traditional British in American. Ah, okay, okay. Um, well, I can skip this question, uh, but can you tell me about some of the awards that Nashville Brewing has won? Sure. So, as I mentioned, we launched Nashville Brewing, or relaunched it just over four years ago. And um, we entered, there's, there's several main beer competitions that are recognized in the industry, and that's the World Beer Cup, in the Great American Beer Festival. And those are like the two biggest recognized competitions. And the World Beer Cup is held every other year, and that's the largest beer competition in the world. Yeah. And the Great American Beer Festival is the largest beer competition in the US. And in 2018, we entered Nashville Lager, which is what I'm drinking right now. That's yeah. our flagship Bavarian Hellas. And that won a silver at the World Beer Cup. Wow. Over 8,000 beers entered. Whoa. And uh, so we won that silver in that category. So we were very stoked. And then last year, we also won a silver at the Great American Beer Festival. So we're currently the reigning award winners at both of those competitions. OK, that is pretty awesome. Where can the public purchase Nashville Brewing Beer? So our beer is really sold throughout Middle Tennessee at uh, most grocery stores, such as Kroger gas stations, craft beer stores, um, and then many bars and restaurants yeah. throughout. So uh, we're in draft and in bottles. And then of course you can come here to the brewery and uh, buy growlers to go or enjoy it here. Okay, um, can you tell me a little bit about the two books you have written and where can people purchase them? Sure, so um, the first book was Nashville Brewing and that really covers the history of how brewing got started in also, Nashville. Also, I wanted yeah. to add, you I've read the first book. Mm -hmm. it, I take it you know the descendants of William Gerst. So there are, there's unfortunately no descendants here in Nashville anymore, but there are some descendants of cousins that, that wrote. Um, uh, and and that I take a, it you had a relationship with them. Um, interviewed them, yes, yeah. Yeah. So Can you tell saying, me a little bit about that, what, yeah, what so you learned? Th yeah, they were very pleased because some of them knew that their ancestors had a brewery, but really didn't, I knew much more about it than they did. So they were very excited that it was, I was not only preserving, to me, I was just preserving Nashville's brewing history, but to them, I was preserving their family history. That is pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, so what's the second book? Tell me about it. So that. the second book is called Party Cans, and I mentioned that I collect beer cans, yeah. and I still do. And what party cans are, in fact, you can see those party cans hanging up on the side of the oh, brewery. And wow. when we walk around the brewery, you can get a better look. But these are big cans, like gallon sized cans for the most part, that were sold in Germany and the United Kingdom in the 1960s for the most part. And you think of it like today as a growler, where you come to a bar and buy a growler and take it home. This was the first time beer was sold in a can in that size to where you could buy a can at and, a grocery and, and store. And feed multiple people. Exactly, exactly. So, so Sort of like a fruit punch bowl, kind of, except, yeah. except for beer. Except for beer. So I got into collecting those particular cans and um, ended up doing it because there's a variety of beer can books for collectors. And so I did a book specifically on those. OK. Um, so where can people purchase the two books? So both books are on Amazon now. Um, we used to have bookstores around. and. Uh, so when Nash the Nashville uh, Brewing book first came out, that was available at Borders Books and all the local bookstores, but um, it's still available at most Walgreens here in Middle Tennessee. Uh, you can see it when you check out at a Walgreens, it's there, but it's still on Amazon and sometimes we sell them here at the brewery as well. Okay, well, well Scott, it was a, that was a great interview. Why don't you show me around the whole process? I'd be and, more than happy to. Well, and start go kind of go through the whole brunt brewing they are still actively brewing back there so we'll have to just kind of watch ourselves just a little bit some of the stuff may be hot or slippery so we'll just watch our step as we go through sounds good all right great
for showing me around, Scott. It was a blast. It is, this is a cool experience. And thank you for willing to be on camera and talk about beer. Oh, you're very welcome. We got a little gift for you, Matt, before you leave. Um, I'm going to get Ashley. Is she right there? <laughs> Ashley's got a little care package for you. To thank you for coming in. Come on up, Ashley. This is Ashley May. She takes care of everyone here in the tap room. There you go. Oh, so we got a shirt for you. Oh my God. Copy of the book. I know you said your mom had a copy, yeah. but that one is autographed, made out to you. Whoa, hey. That and then, since we got to wear a face mask, there's a beer face mask, and then a natural broom I, pin I'm for you. I'm definitely gonna put this on, on one of my uh, shirts. All right. Thank you for coming. Yeah. So let's talk about my mother, Stacy. Yeah, so Stacy started working for That's me. Good.